by itself. So you do not have to push the button. Don't you think that would have been the problem? You know, you see the same thing. You can try to put the Oh, I gotta go. Welcome back to our channel and thanks for watching. I'm Darren Janeski with Big Round Wheel Amusements. We are here today in Cherokee, North Carolina, and we're going to set up an entire carnival. Uh, a little bit something different from what we normally do. Uh, our business is structured around rentals. So normally when we go somewhere, we're setting up rides for corporate events. That's what we specialize in. We customize the rides. Uh, it's usually a quick, four to five hour job and then we take everything down and we go to the next location. So being here, this is almost a treat. We're going to be here for five days. We will be setting up the rides today uh, on a crunch, quite a crunch. So we have just about a day to set up our equipment. Uh, we're, we're booked in here alongside of another company who we, uh, we partner with from time to time to do carnivals. And um, it's a treat for us because, again, five days in one spot. That's, uh, I don't know what we're going to do with all that time. We'll be setting up rides. We'll be dialing everything in. Uh, we've got some technical inspections happening that are scheduled while we got some rides set up. So we'll be covering that. It's going to be a fun time and amazing weather here in the mountains of North Carolina. You couldn't ask for a nicer day. It'd be impossible. So here we go. We're going to get moving. It's not enough just to place the ride. I always like to know exactly what it's going to look like when it gets where it's going. Um, uh, we bring this chalk line and it really helps us lay things out. I'll follow it with spray paint and I'll get a wheel. And I, I like to know exactly where this ride is going to end up when it's all set up because 
there are a lot of unpredictables. There are overhangs on the bumper cars, so the the ceiling and the trim will overhang. So if you don't account for that or you don't have a little bit of buffer factored in, you could end up having to move a ride, which would be it would be a disaster. We never want to have to move a ride once we've already begun setup because Number one, we would not make this carnival. We would be a day late if we have to move this thing. So it's got to be in just the right spot. Another thing I'm looking at here, there is slope to the parking lot. So what's good is the slope goes away from the ride and that's gonna help us because the front of the bumper car where people board is gonna be nice and low to the ground. So we're not gonna have any unnecessary step. The back is going to be lifted up some but it's gonna be in the back. So it's not, uh, it's not really going to interfere with uh, riders getting on or anything, or uh, it's actually going to be the ideal situation. So we use a little bit more blocking when we do that, but we got plenty of blocking. We're gonna see how this road, um, this thing has been all over the place, all over the country, and um, it's done a lot of miles. So this workshop area can get a little messed up uh, so not too bad, not too bad. Uh, we keep a lot of stuff in here. I see we've got some cases of water that have moved around a little bit, but overall, not too bad. So I've got some spray paint in here and a measuring wheel, and we're gonna do some measuring to, to get this uh, placement exactly where we want it. I'm looking for two measurements of 24 feet. That's going to be about right. So we'll have two entrances. We, we think about that too, is wherever you've got your rides, you've got entrance and exit. Um, if you jumble everything up too tight, People can't get on and off. They don't know where the line is. It creates confusion. So I know we're going to have two entrances here, but I think we can run the lines outward from the rides to not cause too much of a disruption to, to flow. So I think that's what we're going to do. We're just going to move our entrances kind of apart and buy a little bit more space. We're going to lift up the back of this trailer here and um, I've had people comment about lowering the air before we before we do any of that before we um, but I don't want to dump the valves now because I'm lifting the back of the trailer up so if I dump the valves now it's just more work that the jacks have to do so I will Put some weight on these jacks back here, do a little bit of lifting, then I'll dump the bags and then I'll let the wheels kind of just float. Um, that's the only reason, it just eases the hydraulic system a little bit. It is a battery operated hydraulic system on this thing. So you have your battery for, for setup and we're gonna run winches, hydraulic pumps, everything with that battery. So we try to take it easy on the battery as much as we can. And you know, lifting 30,000 pounds up unnecessarily, even just a few inches, uh, we let the airbags do it and then uh, dump those bags and then release the brakes or whatever to, uh, to equalize it. And then you're not putting any stresses on those jacks because raising and lowering with those hydraulic jacks down, when the airbags dump, the trailer will move forward or backwards. And um, if you've got weight on those jacks, you'll, you'll bend them. So it's very important that you don't want to build up any torsion or any lateral stress inside there that, uh, that it bends your cylinders. So we're always aware of that. That's on the gondola wheel or this ride here, the bumper cars, because uh, they all have those uh, hydraulic cylinder ram jacks is what lifts the back up. So in addition to the down slope, we've got some side slope here. So an easy mistake would be to lower the front of the bumper cars down all the way, and then realize later that one of the spars that you're extending out is going uphill. So now you gotta move everything. So we're going to only lower the front 
until we have a level spar. That way we can put some kind of wood under it or something because that's a very easy mistake to make. Again, you're, you're, you've got a, a hill going up and you didn't account for the fact that you've got to extend the ride out level from the distance that it's, that it's sitting. And uh, if you don't have 24 feet going out, um, you're, you're gonna have a high floor and we don't want that. We don't wanna re-level the ride. So we're gonna make it right the first time. When we did the original uh, setup video of this ride, I, I didn't include the inside um, on exactly how it looks when it goes down the road. Um, pretty amazing how this thing is designed. I, I can never appreciate it more. But um, everything has a place. And there's some areas you couldn't stick a piece of paper in between where things rack and fold when the floor comes in. It is super congested in here and incredibly efficient. So everything was designed to perfection when they built this thing and uh, everything fits, everything has a place. Now, if you don't put something where it belongs, you can end up bending something. So you gotta be really careful when you rack this ride that the crew knows exactly where everything goes. You have to be sensitive of decals, um, soft uh, rubber, anything like that. The seats, the upholstery on the bumper cars, you can't misplace anything. Everything's got to go in the right place and it fits amazing. There's lots of places you could put a level that are wrong. Um, one is right here because the level kind of just sits and it's on a joint. There are screws here. Um, it's not reliable. See, the sun is on this piece of aluminum and it's causing it to swell up. So you're not getting an accurate reading. You can push on one side or the other. So I normally try to go on this main beam here uh, to get more of an accurate reading. Even this plate here, this fifth wheel plate, could be bent or bumped or warped. So I really like using original steel. And this is the area that I'll use to level the front of the bumper cars. So it says I need to go up a little bit. So I'll adjust that. Let me I need barely any, barely any. So I'm going to pump it up and I'm gonna to try to put my, uh, my Luan shims under there. Hey, Jessica, you wanna bump this up again? And again, red, red means it's, uh, it's a thin piece of Luan. Go ahead higher. That'll do it, hold up. All right, bring it down. That's it. So that's dead level with the extra shimming. We got it leveled and now we'll start working our way back. Okay, I'm gonna go with that. It's showing slope. And I'm going to, I've got slope built into the trailer when I'm leveling it now, but the, 
the slope means that the rear end is up a little bit, and I like that because now I'm going to slide all of my piers in, and when I lower it down, I'll have equal weight distribution. So I'll have enough weight on my center blocks to make a difference. Otherwise, you're leveling front and back, and it's like a bubble in the middle. You don't have enough weight there. So we are methodically loading these blocks as we go back to make sure we have enough weight on all the blocks. And it really helps when you got five days of bumping and nothing's moving. That's what we want. We want no movement. So this is the way I do it. And I think it works good for me. All right, so we have a broken hinge. This is the grid that provides power to the cars. So this hinge being this way, the grid won't open properly. Then we could have a short, which we don't want. So I'm just gonna go ahead, drill these rivets out, cut this section of bad hinge out and replace it with no. to cut the bad section out and this happens from the screen slamming down on their tracks which we try to avoid but sometimes it does happen
that's it. So this repair I just did will save us a lot of aggravation as we put the screens down for the smoothness when they run on the tracks. This is what's really important. This is what the bumper cars are for. They hold my espresso machine. So it goes inside the workshop and we plug it in and I get all my espresso from here. So we set the bumper cars up to hold this. Bacon and mushroom, pepperoni and green pepper, and spinach and tomato. Perfect. What more could a person ask for in life? Well done. Right there. Oh, Smack it more. Don't. 
whole hand. Like make your whole hand.
right power and you know, the We're at day two of the carnival. Um, we're gonna get caught up on a lot of things today that we didn't get a chance to do yesterday. We've got prizes to load in the game trailers, um, flags to put up, just little things that we didn't get a chance. We opened, we were right dead on time to open. And uh, we had a great night. So it was a nice light night to start the carnival rather than just going wide open. Uh, Tuesday night, it was very light. And it gives us a chance to dial things in and assess things that we want to change, anything like that. Um, also, we're here in front of the Himalaya ride, and it has come due for its mag particle testing of the, uh, of the sweeps. So there are ears on the edges of the sweeps that the cars attach to. And um, for some reason, and I don't understand how this was manufactured to need a mag particle test every six months. Six months is all the testing is good for. Um, I don't understand that. I'm not clear on how this was designed to require that because there are other components, other rides all over the place that don't need a six month NDT that suffer far more than just the, uh, the little bit of load that's on these ears. So um, we're having that done. 
uh, on schedule and we'll wait for the test results. Um, it has been good in the past. I think, I think it's gonna be fine. And that'll give us some certification and we'll know exactly where we stand with this ride. And there's many state agencies that require this type of testing to be done. And um, you know, they, we have to furnish the, um, the results of the tests. Uh, so we need to have it. And um, this company, Baker Testing, we've worked with them numerous times probably the best service. I'm super happy with everything they do for us. They give us a really nice comprehensive report, uh, shows everything we need to know about everything on here. And um, it's a good thing. So we're gonna get on with things and get things rolling for today. Hello, I'm Kurt Shear. I'm with Baker Testing Services. We're a non-destructive testing company. I'm here today to inspect some welds on this ride to make sure that they've held up over time and have not cracked or anything detrimental has happened. I'm gonna use a method called magnetic particle testing. What it does is we use an electromagnetic, this is called a yoke, it's an electromagnet. It'll put a magnetic field in the area I wanna test. When I do that, I apply this solution that has iron particles in it with a phosphorus attached. And those iron particles will gather, gather to any crack and make a real sharp, real sharp, bright line that I can see with this UV lamp, a black light. Today I will be inspecting these welds right here. These are high stress welds that are required to be tested every six months by the state of South Carolina. As mentioned, this is my electromagnet. It's called a yoke. See how it has the strength. That's a 10 pound weight. Puts a pretty strong magnetic field in there. What I do is I energize this and there will be a magnetic field all in this area. I use my particle solution and I spray it on the weld. And I look at it with a black light. Now, for these purposes, I'm out in the daylight so it doesn't show very well. But in the actual testing, I will be covering myself with a black plastic to make it dark under here. Done testing all the welds here today. Everything looked good. The ride is safe to use. 
Now it's on to the next job. We only have four rides at this carnival. So this is like super small time. There are carnivals out there that have 50, 100, 125 rides, and they have to manage all of those rides. And to me, it's it's baffling how how much attention it takes to keep things going safe. So whenever I see it, um, especially when they're doing a great job, I really think a lot of their discipline and their their commitment to safety. Some of the ride operators out here in the industry are incredible. And you guys know who you are that are watching. Um, they really care about people's safety and I love it. Um, I care about people's safety too. So I'm always walking around and I'm always looking at what we can do better. Our latest, the keep back sign. We made these signs to go around the bumper cars because I have noticed, although a good operator should always be scanning the perimeter and we always train that, you're also keeping people safe who are on the ride, which is a high priority as well. So while they're watching people, you know, there's a lot of fence that they need to keep track of. So my thought is a child can easily reach in here and touch this track now, it is the guardian or parent's job to maintain their children at an event. It always is. So you can't just let your kids run wild anywhere. Um, it could be uh, at a train station, uh, getting on a bus, anything. You can't do reckless things. So uh, a certain amount of the responsibility lies with whoever brought them to the fair um, to make sure that they're doing the right thing and, and staying out of harm's way. Um, when they're on a ride, we watch them, but the conduct at the event is uh, the guardian's responsibility. So in addition to this, I always try, whenever I walk by this bumper cars, I'm always saying, hey, back up, keep your distance, back up, back up. And it helps, but I can never do it enough. So literally, I find myself doing it at every event. Hey, can you guys back up a little bit? I mainly focus when I see the little ones, the little kids that are climbing on the fence or sticking their arms in or waving, uh, just to make sure they know that there's bumper cars in here and you don't want to put your hands in the wrong place. So I made these signs, we put them around the perimeter, and I think the main thing that the signs have done is it gives people an armrest. So while they're hanging over the fence watching, they can and I've noticed a lot of that. So we still have to sell, tell people when we see that they're too close, hey, back up a little bit, you know. Again, there is electricity in there, there's moving parts, there's cars, there's bumpers. So we just wanna keep people safe. So that's one of our efforts to keeping people safe is uh, the signs. So I just relieved Mike on the spider and it's amazing what my people tell me. So they train me and I like that. Uh, before I get on a ride to relieve someone, to take a break or something, I don't consider myself the expert. I consider them the expert. They're the ones who have been dealing with people all day. They've been running the event uh, they know the characteristics. Uh, certain places we go, we notice certain characteristics. There's things that riders will do different. Um, I don't know what it is, it's just the crowd. Different areas and all that. So they brief me before I relieve them on a ride and you can't get any better than that. Uh, the people on the ground really know what's going on. And um, I need to follow their direction because they come up with some really good things. Um, certain events, there may be shoes, footwear. If there's inflatables nearby, the kids will come up barefoot. We're not putting kids on rides that are barefoot um, because the diamond plate could be sharp. We could have dropped a tool or something on it. Uh, there could be sharp edges. So they're supposed to have shoes on. 
something, it's kind of tough to catch that sometimes too when you have a big crowd. But they're always able to brief me and I love it. I love listening to them because the, again, these, these ride operators, they know so much and um, that's who I want to listen to. So I get my guidance from my employees at times and um, there's never enough guidance. There's never enough safety. There's never enough uh, uh, common sense and they can really tune me in and bring me up to date before I relieve them on a ride. And uh, they do it uh, to each other too. So. Um, it's good safety and it's good stuff and I like it. We're looking at the weather forecast for our next event and I see a lot of rain that concerns me um, not sure what that means for our setup okay, so we are at day three of the carnival um, this is before we open and um, we've had a good few days four rides is all that belong to us at this carnival so it's amazing how much other people that with 15 20 30 rides have to put up with to uh to to make things happen there's so much stuff going on and um it it baffles me at what the big carnival people are doing uh the big ride providers to to get their shows ready it's incredible we're a rental company so all of the events that we do, we get paid for. We do the event, it's usually four to six hours on average, and then we take the rides down and leave. So this is, uh, this is a four or five day run for us. It's, it's been interesting. 
um, there's a lot to cover, a lot to stay on top of, but uh, I like it. I like the challenge. Um, and again, it's, it's, a, it's a drop in the bucket compared to what these other companies are doing. And I salute the work that they do and, and how comprehensive they can be on safety. So um, today uh, it's tickets and, and wristbands. The wristbands are earlier. Um, we've got about 10 other rides here that don't belong to us. So we work with this other company and we get along pretty good with them. And they're the ones that are actually organizing and coordinating the carnival. And they just kind of asked us to help and supply a few of our rides. So we brought four and two games. So um, we've had a last, uh, last few days have been really good and I'm grateful. So uh, we'll look forward to doing some more. What was that show? What was the name of it? That was Legacy. Legacy. Good, I appreciate it. I need more caffeine. So, each shot, each cup that I drink of that espresso that I love is four shots. It's a quad shot. So, um, I had two, so that's eight shots. And I need four more. So that would be 12 shots of espresso. So my heart is, is jacked up. And um, I just love the Italian coffee beans. We use Illy. And uh, it's a dark roast. And I, I can never get enough. So I love it. But um, it's an antioxidant. So maybe it's good. Oh. I don't think so. I think it's having been sweet. No, we fixed our other slaps. We fixed the slaps. That was the push to be sleep. Yep. Okay. So I wake up to this this morning on the ground. And it is a snapped bearing. Um, not really a good thing, but it appears to have come from the rod up at the top. There's like a swivel bearing. So we're taking this off and we're going to figure out what we can do to fix it or order this bearing, get a number and see what we can do to get this ride going again. You should get on the ground, but whatever. That's okay. I'm here. I made my phone call and uh, I am able to get the uh, the bearing for the spider. The problem is uh, overnight, uh, they don't do overnight here. So we can't get our bearing and housing overnighted. Um, in, in reviewing everything, I determined that the holder for the bearing had to have been out of round. Something wasn't right. I don't know if it was machined that way or it was a defect or something, but it wasn't round and that's what caused that, that cast a uh, very hard portion of the bearing to crack, fall out. So I can order the housing from the manufacturer and the bearing and I could have it overnighted if we weren't here. So this remote location 
they they can't get us out here so now that won't come till monday so how do we recover do we take the seat off the ride that's defective um if we keep running it even if we didn't put passengers in the seat the integrity I can live with. I believe that without the the ball uh, rollers inside that bearing, that we could still run the ride. There's no danger of anything coming off. It's going to beat things up. If it beats things up, I'm already willing to change those things, but I just don't want to have metal shavings all around that area, and I don't want to run it like that. Um, so then I looked at, what if I take two seats off? So if I take that sweep off, that's the trouble, and then I do the opposite one, could I, could I salvage this? Um, we did. We took two. We took two arms off. Um, I don't see any load. I wasn't able to get anything out of the manufacturer on whether it's okay to do that. I know we can with a Ferris wheel. If we, you know, there's other rides you can take seats off of and, and run. Um, but I'm not... Uh, I'm, I'm not sold on that. It, it, it felt like when we took the two arms off the spider and we we started the cycle, it was going faster to me than I thought it should have gone. So I almost think that like the drag and everything of having those two seats, not having the drag, the drives are still putting that amount of current into the system and it's maybe over speeding. Um, the seats were, were fluttering a little bit. So I wish I could have made it work just to save the event, but it's uh, I'm not sold on it. I, I can't feel comfortable doing it, and I can't get any validation on whether running it in a, in a different method is going to be acceptable. Um, I'd love to get some support that says, yeah, it's fine to do that. I couldn't get it, and I experimented some on my own, and my overall decision was no, it's not not in anyone's best interest to run the ride um, like that, with that bearing like that. So, uh, so it's a no-go. So we've disassembled the ride, and um, we got it sitting here. And by today, um, it'll be Monday, and we'll get the part here. And I'll be able to easily put the part in because the ride is taken down. And we set it up at our next location. We'll be good to go. We'll be back to normal. So, eh, it's always unfortunate, but we do the right thing in the in the eye of safety, and uh, that's just what's right.
rain and nobody likes to ride rides in the rain and we don't like to run them in the rain. So it ends the night about an hour short, not bad. Um, we'll go back and get dried off and um, the rides are getting washed. We have that much going. Um, for me, doing the carnival, we don't make any money when it rains. Um, in the rental world, we do um, because it ties up our dates and um, when a person reserves a date, they're reserving it rain or shine because we don't have control over the weather, but we still have to move the rides there. So um, we're, we get a little bit spoiled in a world like that and, and need to, otherwise we, uh, we wouldn't be able to maintain our rides properly. So um, yeah, in the carnival business, you lose. So there's people that set entire shows up, massive, like, and they get rained out all week. And I, I feel horrible that they have to go through that, all that work. And, you know, sometimes they don't get a, a day of clear weather to, uh, to put on their carnival and they did all the setup. So yeah, that's rough. Um, we've had good weather and I think we're okay. Um, the rest of the time, this is just an occasional, it was 30% chance of rain today. So we'll, uh, we'll take the good with the bad. That's for sure. Um, the rides were starting to get dusty. The trucks were dusty. Um, they come out and they blow the lots off in the morning and it gets all over the rides. So I'll take a little, little wash. Leela Presley. Leela Presley. If you're here, come up to the So the Water Gun Fund has had a catastrophe. Um, it's had a, a, a disaster. Um, the the truck that brings the the toy across the track has has failed, and um, this wheel goes here, and then there would be a piece of plastic that goes on the end, and that's what the chain hooks to, and it pulls the trolley across. Um, looks to me like this uh, there's not a lot of plastic after you've drilled a hole from here and a hole on each side there's not a lot of plastic holding it so possibly that is what caused this to fail and the the roads bob's space racers who manufactures this game and who did an amazing job manufacturing the game we love this game uh, and the way it's built they uh they sent us a replacement trolley and Mike has installed it so everything is where it needs to be and you see here where the wheels go in we've got this uh, bolt and this is what the chain will hook to and it'll pull this trolley and as the trolley goes across the track it goes up and down here make it look like it's galloping across the track to a win so uh, Mike's changed this out this is the old one and he's going to install it for us. Um, and with this game, we have a handicap station at the end um, because a person coming up in a wheelchair um, ought to be able to play too. And this is the handicap station and this is number 11. And I think being down at the bottom, maybe that's the one that broke. Um, I don't know, it's, uh, it's closer. The roads are rough on this thing. 
that may have contributed. I would say it probably did, but we're going to get our handicap station back after this, so we'll have 11 lanes instead of 10. So uh, we hope for the best tonight. Uh, Saturday is going to be the final day here, and um, we'll see. We'll see what tonight brings. Uh, rain finished us a little bit early last night. Everything's clean now and washed. So uh, we're looking forward to it. Throughout the day, we get a lot of trash. Um, we don't allow trash, um, cups, soda, anything on the rides. A lot of times people, the ride looks like the perfect platform and people will start uh, eating on the ride. The problem is you get powdered sugar and these are rental quality rides. So they have to be able to go to corporate events. They have to go to some really fancy places and uh, if they show up with syrup stains and everything, um, we can't set up a ride and wash it in every location. Um, a lot of times there's no water. So we have to do everything we can when we're at a carnival to try to keep the fair foods off the ride as much as we can. So we put signs. 